Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Cars 3 diecast review. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Brian Spark Launcher. And of course, Brian Spark is the stock car leafless racer for Cars 3. And let me tell you, he looks amazing. Now, as you guys probably know, this right here is a part of the 2018 Cars diecast line, which is very fitting and exciting because we're only several days into 2018, and this is the first 2018 item that I will be reviewing. Now, you can distinguish the packaging from the 2017 Cars 3 line by looking at two main spots. Of course, the color scheme. The new color scheme shows, of course, your red, background there and then you have a background of the desert radiator springs it looks like this right here is the highway and then you have mountains stuff like that in the background whereas before it was the red and then blackness which this is a lot more exciting and then you can also see that everything from 2017 is displayed with the cars 3 logo whereas now it just says cars so we're not limited to only cars 3 releases because in 2018 we'll begin stuff from all three movies which will be exciting makes for a lot a lot of new releases from all three movies now i got this on amazon a couple of weeks ago for around 12 dollars which is a little pricey because i think in stores they're more around eight to ten dollars and they have been found at walmart stores in the usa and in Canada at Toys R Us, I do believe, but right now they are pretty limited, which makes sense since it barely even is 2018. Now the first case of launchers includes two brand new characters, Brian Spark and the Cars 3 Floyd Mulvey Hill, who I will be reviewing in the near future. It also includes Lightning McQueen. So the launcher is technically new on McQueen, but obviously the diecast is not. They will be releasing a Brian Spark launcher. Actually, that's Brian Spark. I always get them mixed up. This is Speedy Comet, the blinker stock car racer. They will be releasing him soon. And according to the Amazon listings, there's also a Brick Yardley and Cal Weathers launcher as well. So let's first take a look at the packaging here. Of course, it does show how Brian Spark launches out of the launcher there with some handy dandy arrows. Now, a lot of the Cars 3, or actually just Cars 2018 packaging, is international, which means it includes multiple languages. You can see Brian Spark Launcher, Lanzador de Brian Spark, Lancador, Brian Spark, Lansor, Brian Spark. So I assume it is, that looks to me like English. You know, I think that's English, right guys? That is Spanish, that is French, that is I don't know. I really don't know what the hell it is. Maybe Italian, something like that. Portuguese, don't really know. But yeah, I do know the other three there. At least I think that one's English, right guys? Here we have metal, and then it has vehicle in four languages. And that is pretty much it for the front. On the back here, again, lots and lots of languages, which is kind of bad for us USA collectors because we're used to, you know, the simple just English cards, but I guess, you know, it's okay. I mean, it's cheaper for Mattel to just produce like one uniform packaging. So it says load, cargar, in seer, carriger, launch. So you load and launch basically. And then you have the other four or other three launchers. So very exciting. This is a pretty cool launcher to have since it comes with a new car. I don't know if Brian Spark will be released separately in the future. I didn't want to take the chance of not getting him down the road, so I went ahead and bought the launcher. So I'll be right back with this opened up. So here is Brian and his launcher opened up looking great and so we're gonna start with his appearance in Cars 3 first and then move on to his features and the launching aspect. So he is just a background racer, doesn't speak or anything. Presumably he replaced Claude Scruggs sometime between the events of Cars 1 and Cars 3 because he here, Claude, was the leakless racer in the first Cars movie. He was actually probably one of the most popular racers in the entire movie because first of all he flew up on top of no stuff so he got like a feature there you guys know that scene and he was basically the first piston cut racer to be released that didn't have any speaking lines along with nitroway back in 2006 
So I was very happy to see that both Leakless and Nitre were returning for the movie because they are the originals. They are the classics to me since they were the first ones released. But you know, it's not like he speaks or anything. Like Claude doesn't speak in the first Cars movie. They're just kind of made icons through their releases and marketing and whatnot. So if there are any pictures I can find of him from the movie, I'll put them there on the screen. Although I really don't remember even seeing him that much in the movie, but I'm sure I'll find something to put there. As for his release, I always mention this, but it's pretty clear, like I said earlier, he may not be re-released in the future, but they don't say first look or anything. So technically it's a little bit more open-ended than with like Jimmy Cables or flipped over cars like that. You know what I'm saying? So let's move on now to his die cast review. So he utilizes the Brick Yardley model, which is this model right here. There are several versions or racers, different paint jobs. I will be showing some, not all. I think I am missing Lane Lock. And what was the other one that I decided not to pull out? There were like two that I was like, nah, those aren't important enough. These are my favorites here. But yeah, we have Doug Thrallman, Buck Baringley, Parker Brakeston, Rev and Go Racer, and Bruce Miller. All of which have generally the same expression. Of course, Rev and Go and Parker Brakeston, they're a little flip-flop there with the eyebrows. Same kind of thing. That's what they really do. They just flip-flop and rotate the eyebrows. Except for Bruce Miller over here who has a completely different expression which is pretty awesome. Now what's pretty awesome is that Brian himself has a completely different expression as well because if you look closely in the kind of dark bumper there, his mouth is not open at all. It is closed, whereas everyone else's mouth is wide open and smiling. So it makes Brian look a little weird and creepy since his eyes are just bulging out there, but it's okay. No worries, and now we're going to compare the two Leafless Racers as, of course, we review Brian. So first off, you can tell that the yellow coloring has definitely changed. Before, it was more greenish, it was very neon bright, now it's a little bit flatter, more concentrated, just like a basic yellow. Also, the secondary color here on Claude was just straight up black, but now it is actually brown. If you look closely, it's hard to see on camera, but it is in fact brown. It is not black anymore, which is very cool. I do like how they changed it up so much. I feel like the brown just makes it look better and a little bit more like chocolate, which I know it's not meant to be chocolate because these are adult drip pans, which is kind of disgusting, but it does look like chocolate to me, which, you know, like a chocolate fountain basically is what I prefer to think of than adult drip pans. But that's what you had back in 2006 as well. You had that rectangular logo right there with like the black squirt and splash behind leak and less was in black. Same type of deal now, it's a little bit smaller. Adult drip pans is incorporated into the rectangular logo whereas before it was outside of it. And obviously the color change and everything. Now what's really cool about Brian is that he has this splash of whatever the oil obviously on his bumper here that comes up onto his hood, whereas Claude did not have that. So it's a pretty big change. You can see his grill right there. 52 is his number still. He did not have a change below the right headlight. He has light gear there on his fenders. Black light your tires with black rims before he had yellow rims, which is okay. I feel like black looks a little bit better since there's like a lot of yellow on Brian, whereas before on Claude it was broken up by some white. His contingency sponsors are the Piston Cup, Vitally Revolting, RPM, Nitroid, Octane Gain, and Clutch A. You can see this arrow or this line right here, which indicates to the pit crew where to kind of lift them up at to change the tires, actually. No work on the on their carriage. Thanks to Bluest, who's a moderator on my Google Plus community and a very loyal viewer. He actually let me know that no RC Cars 5, it's not really to do work on the undercarriage, but more so to change the tires, which makes more sense. So thank you for letting me know that. That was not a feature on any of the racers in the first Cars movie. So you can see how there's that brown splash behind the 52. 52 is gradient starting at white and comes down to yellow, which is how it was before. And he has this kind of like rectangular white patch, I guess you could say, that starts here on diagonal and comes up onto the roof a little bit. He also has like another shade of yellow that is down here, kind of comes up there. Very interesting. On the roof, 
he has the roof flaps and then the white patch again. Now what's really cool about Brian is that his sides are different, like the decals are very different, which is very, I don't know, very rare. I know I just said very four times, but it's just kind of hard to find cars with this. Some of the next gens have it. I think this is the first stock car that I found with it, but yeah, look at that. You just have that one white patch in the center there. And on this side, it takes up pretty much 75% of it. So it's a nice little change from having the sides being uniform, like on Cars 1 here. You can see the black dots that kind of continue up onto the roof or sides there. So it's nice that they changed it up a little bit. On the back here, you have the rectangular leakless logo again. Now, this is really cool. This is like a new logo where it just says leakless straight across, not on top of each other or anything. So that is cool to see. Definitely a new logo for the new branding. On the back here, it's very yellow, whereas before it was very black. You have the leakless logo there again. I don't know why, that, it's kind of weird how the gray is like uneven. You can see how it like comes up there, but it's lower there, that's kind of weird. You do have the black camera, so they can get cool shots of racing for TV. It says adult drip pans and then 52 with the splash which was not there before so very cool we did lose the slogan though of watch your wheels which was pretty funny because you know it's like you're gonna slip or anything like that but we lost that it's okay though we gained like the splash in the front and the two like sided decals that are different so that's pretty cool i think it's a good trade-off so now we're gonna test out the launcher although i am a little hesitant to use my Brand new Brian Spark, Sparks, right, plural. Anyway, we're gonna take a look at the launcher. It has some sparkles in it, which is kind of strange. I mean, I guess it looks pretty cool. You have the leakless decal right here, which is a sticker, so just be careful of that. You can just push that back, it's locked in. You have some tires right there, which thankfully do match Brian's tires, because you know, of course, Mattel would screw it up and put like yellow there because they'd be like, oh yeah, he's yellow. He must have yellow rims. He does have this cool tool chest, which is different from the tool chest he had in Cars 1 that was released with the pitties and all. Of course, the new logo there, bigger. The yellow is different. Now we have 52 on the side there, which is just the sticker with the splash and everything. And then you have like white stripes signifying caution, I would assume there. So we're gonna cut to some testing footage of this launcher. Although I think I'll probably only do it with Brian once to minimize any damage. So the plan is for Brian to launch out here, go in a straight direction preferably, and then hit the Toys R Us bag over here protecting Ramon's house of body art. Please excuse all of my racers right here. They are for future videos, or these ones were for this video, but yeah, I always have like these side spaces for anything I need for the video. So yeah, that's why there are always cars nearby. But anyway, you guys ready for this? All you gotta do is tap down on the tool chest. Oh, oh no, that was not a preferably straight direction. You hit buck bearingly. That is not good at all, but we're gonna see if there was any damage Hopefully not. I am not seeing any damage on Brian Spark. Any damage on Buck Bearingly? None to the visible eye right now. So that is good. Although a little scary that he did not shoot out in a straight direction. It's okay though. And you know what? We're going to give him another go. Maybe I misaimed it or something. Or when I touched it, I accidentally you know, kind of shot it off in the left direction. So we're going to try this again. Hopefully without any deviations. Still a little laugh, but he basically hit the Toys R Us bag. You basically actually hit Bessie. But that's okay, Brian is in solid condition. And now we're gonna try out some other cars. So first up will be the one and only Lightning McQueen. Well, that wasn't perfectly straight either, but it's okay. Still pretty straight. We're just going to leave the camera like right here so you guys can get a view at the entire race or launch. It's not really a race since he's going solo. And perfect. That was a smooth run. All right, McQueen, good job. Now it is Mather's turn. Let's see how a larger, heavier scale vehicle can fare 
in the launcher. Okay, that wasn't too bad. One more go for Mater and then we're gonna talk about the evolution of the launcher. All right, let's strain you out. Perfect, perfect. So that is all the launching fun for today. Hopefully none was chipped, but okay. I mean, I don't really care about Mather and McQueen. Really only Brian Spark. But yeah, we've had launchers in the past. In fact, there was a leakless launcher back in 2008. So here it is. Here's a comparison. It's pretty neat to see how it has changed in about 10 years. This one was wider, this one's longer, thinner. This one had like the air compressor, some sort of, I don't know, monitor right there, the gas pump. So I don't know, which launcher is your favorite? I think I have to go with the classic because I do really like the gate feature there, but you know, both are still really cool. So thank you guys very much for watching my review of Brian Spark and his launcher. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys all tomorrow, hopefully for another video. I do realize that there was not a video yesterday, January 2nd, and that's because I was out pretty much all day with friends and so I didn't have a chance to record a video. I've gotten pretty lazy now that I don't have school. I actually don't really pre-record my videos the night before. I usually do them the day and then upload them a couple hours later after I edit them, which is not really a good idea. You know, I've just been kind of lazy. But hopefully that'll change. I mean, it will definitely. Like, I'm doing it right now like I always do at night. And here is the entire Team Leakless combined with everything from the first Cars movie. Since Leakless was a prominent racer, they released an entire pit crew for him. Comprising of three pitties, three different sizes, some toolboxes, some stacks of tires. And of course, we got Earl Filter, the crew chief, and a hauler as well. So everyone looks pretty nice and happy together. And I'll see you guys later for probably a review on maybe H.J. Hollis or Flipped Over. Probably H.J. though first since that was voted on before Flip. So we gotta be fair to them now. I know Flip is very exciting. I really want to review him. But I really need to do H.J. since that video with the poll for him came out first. So I'll see you guys then. Bye now.